All right, we're going to be palpating two muscles in this video. Um, we have a superior and an inferior, and we're talking about a serratus. So you have a serratus anterior, but uh, maybe a little less known muscle that we have in the back are the serratus posterior, and there is a superior and a serratus posterior inferior. And both of these muscles are going to be originating on the respected spinous processes, and both of these muscles are attaching to ribs near around their rib angles. So for the purposes, I'm going to start on the lower one, and I'm going to count myself up towards the spinous process of lumbar vertebrae number two. So we're going to head central here. So we have five, four, three, and number two. So this is going to be our lowest origin. And I'm going to count up four segments. So lumbar one, thoracic 12, and thoracic 11. So the spinous processes of lumbar two through thoracic 11 is our origin. This muscle is going on an oblique angle, heading superior and lateral, and it's actually more superficial than your erectors, which means it goes over top of that group of erectors in the iliocostalis and longissimus, and it's attaching to the ribs. So we know that iliocostalis, in this case lumborum, is attaching near the rib angles, and this muscle serratus posterior inferior actually goes past that to a similar ribs. So it attaches to the inferior four ribs. So we have rib number 12 right here, and rib number 11, number 10, and number nine. So we have our kind of like a little quadrant right here for serratus posterior inferior. Now because this is attaching to the ribs from the spinous processes, it could in theory do a little bit of lateral flexion, but the main action this muscle is going to be focusing on is going to be pulling down or depressing some of these ribs. So as you inhale really, really deeply, you have a few different sections of ribs that are doing different actions. So as you take a deep, deep, deep breath in for us, these lower ribs are getting pulled down just a little bit, and you can exhale. And our middle ribs are kind of almost expanding out a little bit, and the upper ribs are going to elevate. So again, depending on which text reference you're going with, um, there is some controversy on its actions and when exactly each one of these is firing, um, but we're gonna be sticking as a simple one as when you're taking a deep, deep breath in, some of these inferior four ribs are gonna be held down or move slightly inferior. So if you can, again, take a nice deep breath in for me and just kind of hold that and I'm gonna be cross fibering in the fiber direction where the serratus posterior inferior sits. It is going to be trickier because it is sitting underneath the latissimus dorsi and some of that thracolumbar fascia. So you might not feel it and you can go ahead and let go of that breath. Thank you very much. Um, but let's say your person is running or they've been doing quite a bit of coughing, then they might end up with a little bit of a low back pain right in this area. So again, if they take a nice deep, deep breath in, and while you're pushing on it, that pain goes up. That could be something coming from serratus posterior instead of just a low back abdominal muscle. And you can relax. Good. So there is our serratus posterior inferior. And I'm just going to continue on and jump up towards the superior. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is finding the spinous process of cervical 7, which is also known as the prominence, and then thoracic 1. If you've seen previous videos in this area, what I typically like to do is place one finger pad on what I believe is cervical seven and one on thoracic one. And then I'm gonna passively move the neck in the cradle and feel for which one of those spinous processes is moving. So I've identified this one as the cervical seven, therefore this is thoracic one. So this muscle has origins again on spinous processes like its inferior partner, and it attaches to cervical seven, thoracic one, thoracic two, and thoracic three. So in this section right here on the sides of those spinous processes, and then the muscle, just like the lower segment, runs inferior and lateral covering over top of the erectors in this location and inserting into the rib, just kind of past that angle. Now this is gonna be very tricky to feel because we're getting into the third layer here with both trapezius running in this direction over top of it, plus in the exact same direction, we have our rhomboid muscles going through here. However, rhomboid was attaching more to the scapula and this muscle is attaching again to those ribs. So what I'm gonna do is try to find a segment where I might feel maybe a little bit of a top band. 
Again, I'm going to go back and forth in that section where we have serratus posterior superior. And then I'm going to ask for my partner to take another nice deep breath in, deep, deep, deep breath in, and see if I can feel some tightness going on there. And he's going to exhale. If you feel something tightening up a little bit, you can also ask them to engage their rhomboids by gently trying to squeeze their shoulder blades together. Good. And relax. So that should feel completely different from more trapezius and rhomboids, which are retracting the scapulas together versus this muscle, which is going to be elevating the second through fifth rib during inhalation. Another method that you can sometimes get these ones to flare is by asking a person just to do a quick little cough. <coughs> so again, let's try that one more time. <coughs> Perfect. So you're engaging some respiratory muscles as they're pulling up on their ribs, trying to inhale or exhale forcefully. So again, from cervical seven to thoracic three spinous process and rib number two, three, four, and five past the erectors near that rib angle. So this would be the segment section for serratus posterior superior. So that's gonna conclude our palpation of the two serratus posterior muscles.